have really good news for you. You do not have to turn kids onto science because they naturally love science. What we have to do is turn you onto science and that's the big trick. First, I want to recognize, as I'm sure others will, that we are gathering today on the unceded uh, territory and ancestral lands of the Musqueam people, and what a privilege it is for us to be here doing our work this morning. This uh, Celebrate Science Morning, of course, is nested within Celebrate Learning Week here at the University of British Columbia, and this year is the Year of Indigenous Education you'll find that we have a lot of events running during the year. We have a wonderful event for you this morning. Usually I write novels for young people about social justice issues. But this time, I decided to um, write a nonfiction book because as mentioned in the introduction, I am a cyclist. And I ride my bike pretty much every day. For me, science is all about curiosity. Maybe one of the best ways to turn kids on to science is not to tell them that it's science. Just let them go out there and explore the world and share with them our excitement as adults in science, which is all around us. One bit of knowledge uh, that one of the elders told me, he said, well, if you want to catch lamprey, and you, you take your net and get to the waterfalls and have your friend get up above <laughs> and just spit into the water. And spitting into the water causes all of the lamprey that are hanging on the cliff, on the waterfall, to drop off. They get scared. They're like, ooh, spit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and they fall right into the net. And so that was one way to, to know. Now, how did they know that? Well, they, people had used that, had experimented, and found that that was one way of collecting the fish because there has a negative reaction to their olfactory system they could smell it. And we can go over to our lab today and you can spit in a tank and they will scatter. No one could explain how and why bits of toad bodies were turning up near a lake in Germany. Two clues. Toads inflate themselves as a defense mechanism. And crows with sharp beaks have a taste for toad livers. You can't fake it, you can't lie, you can't make things up. And so I, I quickly learned that when I do illustrate characters in a story, that I have to be very mindful of the characters that I'm creating. Uh, a sea star has to have so many little legs, and seashells have to look a certain way. If you were to walk the aisles of our museum, you will see that throughout these aisles, we've chosen to organize our collection based on relationships between them. You do have many different options of how to group things together and by actually experimenting with what grouping works best for you, giving it a try, um, seeing if you like it, changing it later, uh, really is a very scientific process. I'm not a scientist and I'm, I am privileged to work with a lot of scientists, but one of our secret tools working for museums and science centers is kids books. <laughs> One of the first jobs I ever worked on was about 20 years ago, the Museum of Science and Industry, and the subject was communications, which is a huge subject. And I would go to the library and sign up literally hundreds of books. We'd interview scientists. We'd go and visit other interpretive centers, anything that had to do with communications and telecommunications. But for us, the best first source was kids' books because they really put things into perspective and get right to the basics. Biomimicry encourages scientists and inventors to learn from nature and go from asking, how can we do this, to asking, how does nature do this, and can we do it that way too? The idea is that other species on this planet face many of the same problems that we do, finding food, water, protection from elements and danger. And nature has had almost four billion years of trial and error to get the right solutions. And so they're a jawless fish. They're about 350 to 400 million years uh, old, as far as... Uh, um, in the tree of life. Um, so they're the earliest vertebrates, those in the hagfish. I think this way of bringing together our, our scientists also with children's illustrators, uh, children's authors, 
is very important because that shows how we can have that connection to science in all different ways. So I, in my Coast Salish tradition, I raise my hands in thanks and respect to all those who participated in turning us all onto science today.